All right, uh, the, the Dunwalski kid. Oh, don't scare him. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me get some of that damage. I need that on my class. It's Sorkas, bro. <laughs> Oops. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? And if you are a Magsork enthusiast such as myself, my Magsork is my baby. I'm known for the DK, but the Magsork is my baby. You have to watch this video, guys. This build is absolutely cracked and it popped off when I didn't think it would. Here, I thought all this time Magsork was bottom tier, but if you build it correctly, if you play it correctly, it does pop off. The clip you're kind of looking at is from the stream that I just did last night on New Year's. This is only but three hours of playtime, and I got so many 16k frags, 17k frags. It was incredible. This build actually hits harder than my stamina crit sort for whatever reason. I've yet to upload that video. It's coming out in the next couple of days. So if you like that sort of stuff, if you like a bunch of build videos, uh, definitely like and sub to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon, and I'm going to keep the build rolling for you guys to where you're not left out. There's going to be build for everyone for it with everything and listen guys even if you're not a magsork main or you never even played magsork and you just want to step your little toesies into the magsork pool of water this build functions extremely well for newer players the sets are very easy to attain and quite frankly guys this build just slaps so without further ado let's hop into it okay ladies and gentlemen so let's hop into the character sheet here so we are kitty cat we got 2k recoveries we have 48k max of magica a nice juicy health pool stamina pool Spell damage is around 4k. All this well continuous attack, obviously, like 33% crit resist. Spell penetration is a little low, but we do have access to minor and major breach on this build to make up for that. Crit resist 1500. And then back bar spell and physical resistances are 28k and 27k, respectively. Again, we are a kitty cat. This does have a crit component to it. I think kitty cat is very important. Bewitch sugar skulls as our foo. We are a vampire stage three, and we are rocking the shadow mundus. I think this is the best way to run this build now i have had a similar build to this in the past that i posted like six months ago and i think this was the missing key very first set we're running is crafty alfik this is tried and true this is always my set my my go-to set for the mag sort so pretty much all it does is give you lines of maximum magic which is beautiful we have this on the front bar because we are running a front bar ward that's very very important for this build not only are the sets very important but the bar setup is especially important you have to pay very close attention to the bar setup once we go over it so we do have this in sharpen as well as a shock damage glyph now funny story the one of the clips at the beginning of the video i actually didn't have any of my destro passives in so i'm actually doing like 12 to 15 percent less damage in some of those clips uh, i didn't realize that until uh, midstream today so yeah it, yeah so oh well <laughs> uh, back bar we are running the ice staff of wretched vitality we have a defending trait on this as well as a berserker damage glyph now wretched vitality is going to give you all the sustain that you need again you will have around 2k recoveries without continuous attack in open world and that is more than enough to perfectly sustain you i love this build because you actually use a stamina ability as your spammable and the rest of your burst abilities as well as your buffs are magic based. So there's a nice balance between the two. And as long as you balance the two, you never really run out. So it's very, very strong. Now, if you made this portion, before we continue going over the rest, if you want a little cheat sheet, here we go. I'm actually going to be referencing this from uh, the next, the, the, the rest of the video. So we are running, when it comes to armor weights, I always get asked about armor weights. I think ideally, I'm running too heavy, reinforced on this. I do have two medium pieces as well for extra crit damage a little bit of weapon and spell damage as well as three light is this ideal i'm not exactly sure is it what i'm running does it absolutely slap yeah sure it does so you can mix and match your weights all you want but that is the rule of thumb and again you can screenshot this if you just want to come in watch peace out i understand you guys are strapped for time but if you want to learn a little bit more about the build you know stay tuned so our monster set of choice is going to be mighty chudons the reason we're running chudons it's going to give you armor it's going to give you health uh, which is great but it's going to give you major resolve what this is doing this is freeing up a much needed slot on our ability bar every single slot that i have there there is simply no filler you have to run these abilities i sure it's your build run it the way you want but i have tried for for many many hours and many builds to try and finagle around with the skill setup to get it to where you don't have to run chewed on but 
quite frankly, there's just not a really good monster set for Sork. So I'm going with Chudons because it's nice and passive. It, it tanks you up and it gives you an extra ability to run on the bar. Okay. We do have a one piece train as well, a heavy reinforced. All of our glyphs are a maximum magic. You don't need tri glyphs. So this is a cheap alternative. Just get a bunch of max magic glyphs and uh, that's really all you need. When it comes to our mythic, again, Death Dealer's Fate, Arcane. I do have one mag recovery on the jewelry. I think you can swap this to weapon and spell damage. I wasn't having sustained issues whatsoever. Crafty Alphic Ring, Crafty Alphic Ring. Oh my god, I didn't upgrade this. No, the, the video's ruined. Uh, but yeah, Arcane as well as a weapon and spell damage enchantment for that. Okay, so let's hop over into the skills. Now, the skills are very important. There really isn't much flex room. The only flex room that you have is your ultimate it's set up like this is because this is the best way to get the most maximum magica and you only need that maximum magica on one bar that's why we're running hardened ward so we have crystal frags hardened ward on our front bar because both inner lights inner light is going to increase your maximum magica by five percent plus you have major skill passes which further bolster this and is also going to give you major savagery and prophecy increasing your weapon spell critical rating by 2600 which is essentially 10 percent so in the back bar, Bound Aegis, this is also going to help bolster our maximum magic. Now, you do not have to have this on the same bar as your ward. This is like a sit and forget ability. It's going to increase your maximum magic by 8%. It's going to give you minor resolve as well as minor protection. So that's how we are able to get up to the 48k maximum magic on this build. Now, crushing weapon. I'm just going to go ahead and be blunt. Um, suck it up and get good with this. Right, you can run Crushing Shock, but the problem is with Crushing Shock is that you will not have access to Major Breach on this build. Major Breach is another 10% damage you are otherwise missing. Yes, you can argue that you have some destructive staff skill lines that will, you know, um, ignore like, you know, like 3k of the resistances. So you're not really missing out on a lot, but what you're also missing from crushing weapon is you have a chance to apply minor breach so let me go ahead and show you for example so right now major breach is applied and like every third ladder attack you see you see that minor breach also popped up so that is an additional 3k pin you're not otherwise getting if you're running crushing shock sure crushing shock can do the burning sass effect and you know you know i'm brittle and concussa all that's great but in my personal opinion I think crushing weapon is the way to go. Just get good with a lot of attacks. If I can do it on a controller with my boomer hands, I know you guys can too, okay? So streak, undodgeable, unblockable CC, Dawnbreaker on the front bar for our passives, right? We do have some fighters go passives. And there is a nice little combo you can do with a Dawnbreaker smiting. We actually have almost like a 20k tooltip on this. Uh, that's pretty crazy. So there is a little tip from your boy Horcrux. You probably saw at uh, some points in the video so what you can do, you can go to your back bar. We have overload on our back bar. So you can keep overloading, right? You essentially have access to ults. You're overloading. And then at any point when someone's in the execute range, you can just Dawnbreaker. So a good little strategy, a good little habit to get into is save up a lot, of overload, soften them up with overload. And then when you get them right into execute range, throw out Dawnbreaker into your cookie cutter combo, right? The combo is curse, frag, light attack. You get it. So back bar. Dark deal, you definitely want to go dark deal because it's going to give you minor berserk as well as minor force. One thing I did forget to note on this build, you do have 45% critical damage, which is pretty good. Uh, with a 33% crit chance, uh, this is pretty good. That's why this build hits so hard. On our crit stamina sorcerer build, I will be covering here in the next couple of days. We get this up to 72%. But 45% is a nice, comfortable spot for this. So I really enjoy it. Now, back bar, we are running Haunting Curse. The reason you want Haunting Curse and Hardened Ward on opposite bars is because you get a 20% stamina recovery from your passive. So you need to put these on different bars. Resolving Vigor can't get around it. Critical Surge is too good to pass up. There's, You could argue that you can run Crit Pots, but you will run into stamina issues to where Crushing Weapons is your stamina spammable. So you do have to have a decent amount of recoveries as well as a pretty big pool. And Bound Aegis, again, is just set and forget. Energy Overload, this is going to save you. Don't go Power Overload. Energy Overload, if you're starting to run into sustain issues, if you feel like you're getting pretty low, this is really good to get you back up and capped off. So every single light attack that you throw from this, you're essentially generating 1200 magic and stamina. It's came in clutch a lot of times. Actually, one of the clips at the beginning, um, I was at the fountain. I actually 
swap to my overload, threw out a couple lie attacks just so I had enough Magicka to pull out the, the Curse Frag Street combo, right? So it actually does have a lot of play. Now, if you want to run something like kind of spicy, I actually enjoy Frank. Don't run Greater, run the other one with the AoE Smashdown. It actually does do a lot of damage. So if you find situations to where people are just tanking you and you just can't get away, maybe the charge hro would be better instead of overload but uh, this is the bar setup it's very hard to deviate from this um if you have any suggestions let me know down in the comments but uh, i think this is as good as it gets guys champion point wise you'll be very surprised we have zero defensive cps i just went balls to the walls and uh, it's paid off um, i absolutely love it so we're doing fighting finesse mastered arms weapons experts so when your overload spam does come out these are hitting hard as fook and deadly aim I'll be going over into the red tree, red trees, sustained by suffering, pain's refuge, survival instincts, and then just some casual points in the bastion to give you that 15% increase on your shields. All right, that about does it for the video, guys. I tried to keep it very short, very minimalistic in this approach. Let me know if you guys like this sort of format going forward and i'll see what i can do and before i peace out guys a huge and glorious shout out to my youtube members that you guys are absolutely amazing i appreciate each and every single one of you and if you want to help support the channel the best way to do so is with a like and sub you can pick up a youtube membership or even better you can go sub to my secondary channel i will be covering a lot of fps content over there so if that is more your vibe i got something for you i will start uploading over there on that channel this month and i would really appreciate the support so with all that being said you guys have a great rest of your night and i'll catch you in the next one peace